ordinary horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hot Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again, rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Oh! Sam is the smartest boy. Whoever shouted ship a high, he can weather any storm that blows. He's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real gold power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. John Sinclair held his four-year-old son, Davy, tight in his arms as he and his wife, Anne, struggled through the storm toward the buildings of the stagecoach station. The buildings were dark. The stage line was never operated during the winter months. And when the rest cabin was reached, and Anne held her lantern high in front of the door, they found it padlocked. They fought their way to the stable, and Anne breathed a sigh of relief when she saw there was no lock on the door. Thank heaven. <laughs> With only one arm free, it took all of John's strength to wrench open the door. Quick, Anne, inside. <laughs> Oh, this is the answer to a prayer. There's a stove and firewood. And straw in the stalls. I'll make a bed for Davy beside the stove. I suppose we should have stayed at home. And simply done nothing? No, we had to try and get Davy to a doctor. We'd have made it if it hadn't been for the storm. What a Christmas Eve. Snowbound. In a stable. And with no way to reach a doctor. Oh, oh darling... If there were only something we could do for him, John. I'm sure it's appendicitis. He needs a doctor. I'll start the fire. It should warm up in a minute. I'll get some straw. A fire was lighted in the stove. A bed of straw was made for the little boy. And John laid him gently on it. <laughs> How's that, Davy? It's uh... Are you feeling any better, son? I'm... Oh, that's good, Daisy. Try to sleep, darling. All right, Mama. Oh! Wait. Listen. Someone's calling. See who it is, John. Here's the lantern. All right. A man. Anyone we know? No. He's a rough-looking customer. Howdy, partner. Mind if I come in? No, no, not at all. There's a stove. We have a fire going. You're lucky you have snowshoes. I'd never have made it through the pass without them. So you've come from Mountain City. Never mind where I'm from. Hey, there's a woman here. Oh, uh, my wife. And that's my little boy. I'm John Sinclair. I'm working a claim on Rocky Creek. I'm interested in mining myself. The name is uh, Smith. How do you do, Mr. Smith? Howdy, ma'am. 
It's a terrible night, isn't it? We're always sure of having a white Christmas in the mountains. White? Even if it isn't very merry. Well, at least we have shelter. Wait. Who's that? I have no idea. Another traveler, perhaps. Stand aside from the door. Why are you drawing your gun? No telling who it might be. Uh, the door isn't locked. Come in. I can't. I have a man with me who's nearly done for. I'm holding him up. All right. Open the door, Sinclair. As John opened the door, two men staggered into the barn. And John pulled the door shut behind them. One of the men was completely exhausted and would have dropped to the floor if the other hadn't lifted him bodily and carried him to the stove. Do you mind if I put him down here, ma'am? No. Is he hurt? Not that I know of. Yeah, but we'll have a look. I found him out in front of the station, lying face down in the trail. Oh. What is this place? What's it look like to you? It's a stable. Here, I'll get these snowshoes off here. No, no. I must keep going. Oh, now there's a brave idea. You take two steps outside and fall on your face again. Did I do that? You did. There. Now I'll take my own off. Who are these people? Since we've just arrived, I'm in no position to make introductions. I, I'm John Sinclair. Yeah. I'm I. This is my wife and the little boys, my son. My name is Smith. Is it now? And yours, my buckle? You who'd like to fight the storm again? My name is Jones. What's yours, Irish? We'll say it's green. Since I'm only competing with a Smith and a Jones, there's no reason why I should tax my imagination. What do you mean by that? Just that my name isn't green, his name isn't Jones, and his name isn't Smith. And now that Mr. Smith realizes he's among friends, he can put up his gun. I, I don't understand. I'm afraid I do. These men are not... We're three they... wise men who've come to pay you a visit on Christmas Eve. Wise men? Three wise men, ma'am, who are a little too wise for their own good. How do you figure you're so wise, Green? A man was murdered in Mountain City tonight, and the sheriff's rounding up everyone who might have committed the crime. For anyone who might be suspected, it was a wise thing to get out of town. And from your faces, I can see that what's true for me is true for you. And so I say again, we're three wise men met together in a stable on Christmas Eve. Oh. There's irony in that man. Who was killed? A crook. A cheater, a scoundrel. His name was Luke Devlin. It was he or one of his hired gunmen who killed my best friend, Tim Moriarty. And I took a great oath in public that nothing would stop me from evening that score. Devlin was my partner once. He did his best to break me. I swore that I'd get even, too. He cheated my father out of a fortune. My father committed suicide. It was Devlin who killed him. Then each of you hated this man, this Devlin. It seems we each had a good reason, ma'am. But you didn't... Somehow I know none of you killed him. Oh, that's because such a sweet lady as you would find it hard to think ill of any man. Oh. What's the matter with the boy? Mommy, it hurts. Oh, Davy, darling. We think it's appendicitis. Do you mind if I take a look at him? Oh, no, no, indeed. Oh. I'll not hurt you, Davy. I just want to see. Oh. I think you're right, Sinclair. My guess is that he should be operated on at once. We were trying to get him to Martin City. No chance of that tonight. I've heard that the best temporary treatment is a cold compress. Well, now, this bandana of mine could be wet with snow. It may help a little. No sooner said than done. Hey, I see a couple of lanterns near the rest cabin. Two men. Will you look now? A masked man and an Indian. They must be outlaws. Their guns are slung low. They must be killers. I'd better shoot first and ask questions afterwards. If you shoot at all, you'd better shoot straight. I mean to. I have a bead on the masked man. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. 
Hunter Harry is the boy of fire. He brings wild animals back alive. He can capture lions, cause he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet, Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Continue. As the masked man and the Indian advanced toward the stable, the man who called himself Smith took careful aim. But before he could pull the trigger, Anne threw himself in front of him, barring the door. No, I'll not let you shoot anyone like that. All right, ma'am. Stand aside. I'll not shoot until I'm sure, but I'll keep him covered. Hello there. Come in. Stop this blanket roll beside the door, Tonto. Ah. Come in with your hands up. It was the Lone Ranger and Toto who entered the stable. In spite of Smith's command, their hands remained at their sides. Toto and I are not lost. Why are you pointing the gun at the masked man? Hush, Davy. Don't let him hurt the masked man, Mommy. He's the Lone Ranger. No, darling, I wish he would. He is. He called the Indian Toto. Mister, do you really have silver bullets in your gun? Excuse me, gentlemen. Yes, Davy, I do. Would you like to see them? Yes, sir. All right. Here you are. What? They are silver. It is the Lone Ranger. Is your horse outside? No, Tonto and I had to leave silver and scalp in Mountain City. The snow in the pass is too deep for any horse. Oh, I was hoping you'd ride to the North Pole. And tell Santa Claus where I am. I'm sure Santa Claus will find you. Will he? May I touch one of those bullets? Why, of course. This one is for you. Thank you. That's a good boy, Davy. You go back to sleep. What's the matter with him? Appendicitis. He should be operated on once. We were trying to get him to Martin City. I see. I'm sorry about drawing a gun on you, mister. Well, that's all right. What's your name? Smith. And yours? Jones. And yours? Green. Did you all come to the past tonight? Your faces are answer enough. We did. But there's no need to disturb the boy with our business. Follow me. You, uh, you have business with us, mister? With one of you. How did the sheriff describe the man we're after, Toto? Him six feet tall, weigh 180, him not shave, have dark beard. What was he wearing? Heavy boots. Mackinac. The description fits all three of us. Now, may I ask what this man you're looking for is done, that he should be wanted by the law? The man I'm looking for knows what he's done, and I expect him to identify himself. Oh, do you now? You, you seem very confident. I am, because the man I'm looking for can save that boy's life. Mommy, has the Lone Ranger gone? No, Davy. Go to sleep. It wouldn't hurt so much if he held my hand. Why, of course, Davy. I'm right here. I'll be glad to hold your hand. He said one of us can save Davy's life. It would take an operation in Mountain City. In Mountain City. An operation. Tonight. And the one who can make that possible is the man the Lone Ranger is looking for. The man who admits he can save Davy's life is the man who will be accused of murder. The 
three men separated and stood watching the Lone Ranger. Davy moaned softly, still holding the masked man's hand, and the Lone Ranger talked in quiet tones with the boy's father and mother. Finally, the man who called himself Smith approached the group around the stove. Mister, the only thing that can save Davy is an operation, isn't it? That's right. An operation costs money, and Sinclair probably can't afford it. All right, I'm the man who can. You get the boy to Mountain City, and I'll pay for the operation. I have plenty on deposit at the Mountain City Bank. Under the name of Smith? You don't have to be told who I am. I'm Nick Blaine, Devlin's ex-partner. Are you? I suppose people heard us arguing at the hotel room tonight. But when I hit him, I swear I didn't mean to kill him. You didn't, Nick. And you're not the man I'm looking for. But people heard you quarreling with Devlin, but he was shot an hour after you left. You... Honest? It isn't money that can save the boy. It would be impossible for either you or me to get Davy safely to Mountain City tonight. I heard that. The man who called himself Green stepped forward. I heard what you said. And I'm the man you're looking for. Not if your name is Green. No, it isn't. It's Mike Trelawney. As you well know, I used to be one of Fremont's scouts in the Sierras. And I'm a man who can beat any blizzard. I can make it through the pass without any trouble at all, even carrying the boy in my arms. Mike, what I meant by saying that no one could get Davy safely to Mountain City tonight was that he couldn't stand the trip. You aren't the man who can save his life. Does that mean you're not accusing me of Devlin's murder? It does. Devlin told the sheriff who shot him, and the sheriff told Tonto. Well, since Nick and Mike have been clear, that leaves only me. It was my name Devlin spoke. It wasn't Jones. No. You, Dr. Henry Warren? Yes, Tonto. And I killed Devlin. I went to his room and leveled a gun at his heart. I told him who I was and why I meant to kill him. That he'd driven my father to suicide. But I couldn't pull the trigger. Devlin took the gun away from me. Then how did it happen? How was he shot? It was afterward, when he was pointing the gun at me and laughing. He said he was going to get rid of me and claim self-defense. I jumped at him. It was then that it happened. And trying to fight me off, the gun was turned toward him and it went off. You were claiming self-defense? It would be hard to prove, wouldn't it? That doesn't matter. I'm willing to face the music. You're wrong, though, in thinking I can save Davy's life simply because I'm a doctor. How can I operate without instruments, without antiseptic or drugs? You brought nothing with you? Yes, I packed everything in my blanket roll, but it got too heavy for me, and I discarded it. Tell me, get blanket roll. You can't. I dropped it in the past. You wait. You see. You can't possibly find it now. We found it on our way through the pass. We brought it with us. Toto got there just outside the door. Here, blanket roll. This... You are? Yes. Will you operate, Doctor? Let me make sure everything's here. Instruments, anesthetic, antiseptic. Yes, everything. Will you operate? At once, sir. I'll need help from all of you. First, boiling water to sterilize my instruments. Then see. The Doctor worked swiftly, and within an hour, the operation had been performed. Warren gave John and Ann his happy assurance the boy would be all right. They smiled down at their son, still sleeping under the anesthetic. And it was some time before they realized the Lone Ranger had slipped out of the stable. Where's he gone, Tonto? Him go see friend. Not far from here. Friend who keep sheep ranch. Did the storm let up any? Ah. Uh, it's over now. Oh. Lone Ranger get food. Maybe something else. He didn't get back by morning. Christmas Day dawned bright and clear. The Lone Ranger returned with a sack of provisions and a small blanket-wrapped bundle that he guarded carefully. But hardly had he entered the stable than the door swung open again. Sheriff Mark. Merry Christmas, sir. The same to you. Oh, I see you found your man. Yes, Sheriff. I'm ready to give myself up. I have good news for you, Doctor. Really? The best, I'd say. 
Luke Devlin will pull through. I'm glad. Not only that, but he must have been touched by the Christmas spirit when he thought that he was going to die. He told us just how the shooting took place. You're a free man, Doctor. Oh, that is good news. Davy's awake. Yes, darling, Mommy's here. Is it Christmas yet? Yes, and you're all well. Isn't that wonderful? Did Santa come? Well, Davy, he, he must have left your presents at home. Didn't he bring anything here? The Lone Ranger promised me. Well, here's something that might have been left for you, Davy. Look. From the blanket in his arm, the Lone Ranger lifted a little puppy, pure white, with saucy black eyes and a black nose. The masked man placed it beside the boy. This young fellow is looking for a master. The puppy adopted Davy at once. He licked his hand with his tiny pink tongue and then snuggled close. Oh, mister, is he really mine? Of course, Davy. He's so soft and white. I love you, puppy. You're the best Christmas present I ever had. <laughs> Did you hear that, sir? Yes. Mrs. Sinclair told me that last night when you and Nick and the doctor came here to the stable and found the boy, you were reminded of the old, old story of the birth of the Christ child. And when you were asked who you were, you said you were the three wise men. Well, in a way, you've acted just like those other wise men. They brought gifts to the babe in the manger. Gold and frankincense and myrrh. Last night, Nick offered gold to Davy. Mike, his strength. The doctor, his skill. Offered them when the offering might have cost a great deal. And yet in the end, it's what this little puppy has to give that means the most to Davy. This little one is proving again what was proved 2,000 years ago. There can be no greater gift than love. Merry Christmas, everyone. of a special Wheaties record albums yet? Well, just listen to a few seconds of this sample. Hear that? Every note of the tune, clear and crisp. And it's recorded on a standard weight, 7-inch, 78 RPM record from one of the Wheaties albums I'm talking about. Now, each of the albums contains eight wonderful tunes, like the one you heard. But the amazing thing about them is this. You can get one of these fine Wheaties record albums for only 25 cents and a Wheaties box top. Four big albums, playtime tunes, folk songs, old favorites, and popular tunes. Take your choice or even get them all for your record collection. Look for directions on the back of the special Wheaties record offer box at your grocer's today. W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you.
to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.